Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for a big daily dose of Dismal Disney today. It's a daily, it's a Disney dump. The Disney dump? It's a Disney dump. It needs flash like stock. Yeah, so we're going to talk about this. Uh, Disney had their shareholder meeting today. It was announced that the Disney board stays intact and almost immediately the stock drops off a cliff. I just want to point out, I told you that Disney was probably going to win. Oh, yeah, I did, yeah. And I said, it's it's going to go, it's, they're going to win. I, I would hope the pelts would get on there, but they're going to win. And then, but I'm telling you, if Disney doesn't make changes to the good by next year, you thought it was bad this year where there's two or three groups. Next year, there's going to be even more groups coming at them. They cannot get away with it for another year. No matter how much raw, raw spin bullshit Iger puts on it, which we're going to talk about because there was a lot of that going around, they cannot do another year like last year and expect to stay there next year. Yeah, and, and there are a lot of pissed off shareholders. In fact, most, the questions were going most of the questions were basically pointed attacks at Disney's plan. Do you have a plan? Why are you so political? Why are you not making family friendly content anymore? You know, and and some of the answers were were typical Iger. Oh bullshit. no, my favorite was well, we're you know, are you going to push agenda for entertainment? And they're like, well, you know, we're we're here to entertain everybody and for, to represent all kinds of people. Every exact wording, and he's basically like, we're going to be decent. And it's like, so wait, so you're saying anybody questions why you're putting agenda over entertainment? Your fans aren't decent people. I was like, are you really that stupid to make yes. that comment? Yes. I was They're, like, holy shit, dude. Yeah, let's Whoa. let's uh let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, you'll get a woohoo if you do. Woohoo! Uh this come from piratesandprincesses.net. We got a couple of stories up, but that really, other than the the vote, it was pretty much a non-meeting like there wasn't a whole lot that was brought up at least when we listened to it no it was it was the the, the things that were on the ballot and they gave whoever wanted a chance to pre present their propositions to speak of course uh, uh, disney's propositions were, were yes. you know allowed to go through but if it's a shareholder idea it is not it never is and they keep for all their talk about we listen to shareholder suggestions they really don't no, they don't. They they pat you on the head. They even patted Nelson Peltz on the head, and you could you could tell that they were uh, pretty adversarial with him. They're like, Nelson, you got three minutes. But shut up, Nelson. Mickey's gonna Sh beat you, bitch. <laughs> Mickey's um, gonna backhand you with his big ass glove. Oh, I have it here. When when somebody asked about Disney staying out of politics and just entertain, Iger was like. Disney's a source of hope that will tell stories that reflect the world and walks of life. He said they aren't supposed to advance agenda, but he's guided by decency and respect. So if you don't like their movies, you're not a decent and respectful person. Yeah. That's not what he said, but that's kind of the implication. This is me. this is unfavorable mix 2.0. This is this is just a wow. I, I just thought it was funny. We're, li even. we're listening to this thing and like they're like call after call, we're just attacking Disney over their politics. So yeah, if oh, yeah. The, if they don't course correct themselves they're going to have the same problem next year because mm -hmm. they only they only uh, vote these people on the board for a year well go so. back to the stock go uh, the current stock okay it's interesting if you look last night they started calling it that disney board is going to win that it was about eight o'clock last night yeah it was, it was around this time yeah. so it was like it was like 123 was a high and Boom. as soon as it started, people started to realize Disney was going to win. The yep. stock just dropped. Then today at the meeting, it Boom. dropped. And then as soon as it was announced for sure, Disney's board nominees won. The stock just went. Yeah. Uh, the reason people are like, well, the stock's been doing really good. The reason that the stock has been rallying is because people honestly thought there was going to be some change at Disney. And they were buying Disney stock thinking it might be worth having. Well, if you believe there was going to be change after today's call. All hope is is kind of lost in, in in some regards because basically they didn't answer questions. They talked in circles. They're like, oh, ESPN's is great because it's going to be a betting service and everything. It's okay, an app. Uh, or to, oh, we're never been more excited about streaming because they're killing it in the streaming world. I'm like, yeah, you killed Marvel. You killed Star Wars. You're going to kill, you know, keep them in IPs. And then when they're trying to talk about all the exciting things coming out, they confirm they're going to do the live action Moana because they fucking learn nothing. Yeah, they're going to do the live action Moana anyway. And then they showed a picture, a, a clip, and that's, you know, Moana, her face. And that's the, to promote the live action Moana, too. Oh, and they got both voice actors back. Oh, boy. How much that cost? Oh, boy. Yeah, because they probably they probably had sound alikes recording because it was supposed to be a TV show, guys. Moana 2 
was supposed to be a TV show. It was not supposed to be a movie. And they're just cobbling it together. Oh, Cause it's under, got, 100, it's under 120. Now. Oh my God. Yeah. It's going down, down, down guys. Uh, I think people are pissed. I think a lot of investors are pissed. They're like, we're not going to get any change. This company is going to go in the same wrong direction. And they even brought up and we'll go through some of the comments. Actually laughing place has uh, a pretty good rundown of it. But there were people asking them about the parks, too. Like, basically, why aren't you taking care of the parks? Yeah, they said, okay, I have some of this information. But it was funny. Like, they were saying about, oh, you know, what are you going to do about the money for the parks to upkeep the parks and give people, you know, guests new new experiences? And they're like, yeah. oh, we're spending $60 billion in the $60 billion bullshit. But then they got pointedly asked, what are you doing? Because Epic Universe is coming. What are you doing? Because next year they're opening. What have you done? And their, his answer, I love this. His answer was, well, we've known about it for a long time, even though they didn't announce it until a few years ago. So we did Toy Story Land that opened in 2018. Yeah. And we did Avatar, uh, Pandora World, World Avatar opened in 2017. And we did Galaxy's Edge, it was in 2019. And we did that big thing at Epcot that was supposed to be something completely different. And then we had to cheap out on it. And you got a bunch of really, really cheap shitty interactive things that don't work half the time in a garden and you know we and we got guardians of the galaxy you know the raw cosmic green wine which i do agree that one is good ratatouille which is a clone from overseas and um you guys got tron which is another clone from overseas and yes you did deliver those things but those were all in play well before epic universe was announced those were you were working on guardians and tron since like 2017 yeah and what Universe, does it take six years to build one coaster when Universal can can put together an entire park? No, I know what they're going to do. They're going to say, well, we knew. We knew the Epic Universe was coming. So 40 years ago, we built Epcot yeah, to beat them knew. to the punch. So that's – that's laughably on. ridiculous. It's come so on. So Laughing Place put up this meme. Yeah, this okay, is they're, Laughing Place. They're like, you know, usually pro, they're like announcing new attractions in response to competition, saying seven-year-old expansions were in anticipation. It wasn't even announced. It was actually a rumor. I remember because we were covering Disney. We actually had another blog. And I remember when Epic Universe was being rumored and nobody really knew. It was before the pandemic. It was it before was, the pandemic. Right it wasn't before. Like 20, it was like 2019, 2020. Late ni 2019, early 2020 that the plans were starting to leak for it. And uh, people knew that Nintendo was probably coming, but they did not know they were going to build an entirely new park. Right. So bullshit that they knew, yeah. and that's why they bullshit. did it. Even there, even everybody's mocking them, even laughing place. And then, okay, I will say, and I was like, yes, they admitted it. He said, he, well, first of all, they were announcing everything, and most of it was like overseas stuff, like all yeah. these expansions overseas. And Disneyland's going to get our new expansion if it gets voted by Anaheim. And then, oh, here's a blue sky for the Avatar experience coming that, you know, it may or may not be real. This is the picture we put together to shut you up. You keep announcing blue sky shit all the time. We haven't gotten anything. Um, but he said, well, now that we've got the whole thing worked out with the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District, we can move ahead on plans, which is what I said. I Shh. said they couldn't announce jack yep. shit because they were in legal battle with the people they had to get approval for to move forward to announce stuff. And here we are. Well, I mean, here, like Laughing Place. Uh, this is now this is Disneyland, but everything's up in the air. The possible Avatar yeah, expansion. Oh, it's a possibility. Possible. Basically, it was a bunch of bullshit nothing burgers. And people said... Are we going to get anything? Because you keep saying stuff about D23, but it's blue sky stuff, and then it goes away. And then we hear, you may be possibly, maybe getting this. Possibly, maybe. What are you doing? And then he's like, well, we did all kinds of stuff seven years ago that we opened years ago, which would have been planned years before that. That's but we had so, no idea of Epic Universe, but we're going to claim we did. That's such bullshit. I mean, this is such, basically. It was. Look, it, was. it was so much bullshit. Th you have there, no idea. there is no plan. Disney has no long-term plan. Disney's long-term plan is surviving. And I think Bob Iger was too preoccupied. And he'll say, well, it's Nelson Peltz's fault. He was too preoccup uh, preoccupied trying to save his reputation, trying to look good, trying to schmooze people to keep his friends on the board. That he wasn't steering the ship and they already hit the ice. You have already hit the iceberg. You hit the iceberg a couple of years ago. It's just taking a long time for the Titanic to sink. And, and even <sighs> moving ahead with their film slate, it was all the same things everybody knew about. You it's know, all boring. Oh, it's, it's all it's, boring. It's, oh, the only one that maybe, okay, Inside Out 2 might do well. Yeah, Deadpool maybe. Deadpool and Wolverine might do well. I do not, I mean, we'll see, Plan of the Apes might do well. I just don't know, but I thought Avatar wouldn't, and here we are. Um, but those are like the only three things they have that are big news coming out and they're doubling, tripping down, pushing that stuff. But okay, then what? 
He's not saying like that's for this next year. Okay. But then what happens next, the year after that? Cause you have to be green lighting stuff now to be doing well. But what do we have coming out next year? The next Captain America movie, which is reportedly is having reshoot after reshoot and the Thunderbolts that no one gives a shit about and all this other stuff people don't want. So what do you, okay, great. You can get a pass this year. What about next year? Yeah. And you all, and I don't want to hear it. If, if, if you guys lose money again this year, I don't want to hear it because you voted to keep it the way it is. Yeah. You deserve what you flip and get. Well, I'm telling you what, what, and this is what we talked about before. What was going to keep it the way that it is, is the, the Disney fans, again, people who either they're not going to vote or they're going to vote for Disney because Disney told them to, but a lot of these people, and I, I know some of them, they don't own any other stock. They don't own any other stock, but they own Disney yeah. stock. In fact, I remember back in grade school, we had a show and tell day. I don't think I ever told you this. We had a show and tell day and one kid came in and he got Disney stock for Christmas and he brought his certificates in. Is it and, your neighbor? Uh, no, it wasn't. I'm surprised it wasn't your neighbor. It wasn't, wasn't the rich neighbor. No. I'm surprised. Um, that sounds like a very, their family thing. To I do. actually think I, I want to say it was the, the vice principal's kid who was in my class. But anyway, he came in and then we had this whole conversation about stock and what stock is. Back then, I think it was just like, it wasn't very much. It was like maybe 20 bucks a share or something. It was it was cheap. Um, it was very cheap back then. And so a lot of people bought cheap Disney stock back in the day, back in the 80s and 90s. And, you know, and they just sat on it. And that was kind of like part of their retirement plan is these are the same people that buy DVCs. I'm looking at the picture of the annual shareholder with a Mickey. That Mickey looks off model to me. He is off model. I'm like, that is a Oh, very, my God. The AI. It's a very off model Mickey Mouse. Um, I would have got slapped for that shit. If I, I, if I, I, if I know, drew a Mickey I know, like I that. I the models because we would have. Yeah. That's off model. I, I actually I actually was an approved Disney artist, uh, believe it or not. For <laughs> not, license now. Stuff. not now. <laughs> but for years, I was. I worked on licensed stuff. Uh, I would have gotten the shit slapped out of me if I drew a Mickey like that, if I turned that in. Because nothing, like even his glove and stuff, it it's just like, doesn't. Like, that's, that's bad. I'm yeah. looking at it, it's driving me nuts because I'm like, I mean, that might have been, they just put that image on there, but it's so It's probably just model. like clip art, but it is off Oh, model. it's bad. Um, okay, why don't we go through the laughing places? We can run yeah. through what happened because I'm sure there was so much we for, we're forgetting stuff. So we started, they do their whole, oh, we're going to, we're going to let people talk. Yes. So Disney waived the right for trying to Blackwell to formally uh, nominate their directors because of course yes. they did. Yeah. Oh yeah. They were very, they were very dickish. They were just like, they once they knew are. they had they, it, they once year. they knew they had it, they're like, yeah. Oh, they are every year. The thing is they, they, they were panicked up to the end. Um, so they're talking about, yeah, Iger gets up there and they do this, they do this whole, you know, after they do this voting and they say, oh, oh, oh we're going to do this, it's over, they won. Um, then there's this whole big, you know, montage of like nostalgia and upcoming things that try to, you know, pull on the heartstrings to get you be all Disney, Disney, Disney. Um, but some of the things people presented were like one person, I'm assuming the way it sounded is they, they're trans and, and they wish they hadn't have gotten the surgery. Is that what's going on? I couldn't under tell. Yeah. So yeah, somebody used their opportunity as a, yeah, they basically said Disney needs to have detransition uh, therapy expenses paid for because uh, this person transitioned, regretted it, and Disney pays for transitioning, but they don't pay for detransitioning. Okay, so that was one of them. And then the other person was questioning the the golden parachutes and saying that shareholders should get more of a say in how much you know they're given. Is that what was going on? Yeah, um, yeah, the golden parachutes, uh, which are ridiculous. Um, yeah, Disney approved a proposal in December 2023 regarding cash golden parachutes. This proposal would increase it to cover non cash compensation basically i think they want more checks and balance as i understood it this guy was talking 100 miles an hour but but disney's but also going to want they only the, give you two minutes to talk but disney's yeah. also going to want these executives the rich people and their friends want the golden parachutes yeah they want more oversight over these executive golden parachute packages and then like, there was the educational foundation of america i don't understand what they were talking about um, Your political stuff yeah they wanted to know they oh, basically political contributions that's it yeah they wanted to know what where bob Iger was coming up to what who well, yeah, coming up to are, where are you sending your money and why are you doing it and that's actually a fair that was actually a fair a proposal, I believe. Yeah. Um, and then they had the, another person who said that uh, had concerns about Disney contributing to politicians that disagree with climate. And this was this was somebody on the other side. He was like, you know, you contribute to. So this is like now we've got all the grievances are being aired. So we have people on the right that are like Disney's too political about uh, LGBTQ causes or whatever. And then the other side that they're like, well, you're not political enough. You're not g giving the climate change and anti-abortion ads and da, 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 da. 
Uh, double dealing. It's Disney's double dealing, which they just didn't they just get called out for that? Well, they've been. I mean, it's nothing new. Again, I mean, the... we already told you guys that's how it's been for years. Go ahead. We've talked about this. Um, they're talking about their charitable giving, and they're talking about giving to certain charities. Yep. Um, then of course saying don't vote for any of these things. They pause to give time to vote. Literally, they pause for a second after the last person talks. It's kind of like, it the, like ten seconds. Okay, it's closed. Kind of, it's like the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movie. Like, you know, you want our help? Nope. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we're done. We're, we're done here. Um, um, so, yeah, the full Disney, everything Disney wanted was uh, was approved. And everything Disney didn't want was, was not approved, basically. Yeah. What's so weird about this is, like, you saw in real time the change in the tone of the shareholders. Like, from a couple of years ago where it was like, hey, don't you think you should be making more cartoon movies like this? Don't you think you should do more in the parks? Which there were a couple of questions like that. But almost all the questions were about politics. It was a very, very, very politically, yeah. You know, and that that and they're basically slamming Disney, like just people for their were po- not happy. Like, every time they started asking questions, we just started laughing because like they were just they. Oh were, yeah, they, they were, were clearly punches. not happy. Clearly, so not happy. he starts. Iger, so now Iger's going to get the loss. Was obviously pre-recorded, and they're talking about we were reinvigorating creati- creativity at the film studio and 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 sustain profitability in streaming. Even though the streaming wars and that has made streaming not very profitable, there's been a lot of companies having to sell off or they're they're plummeting because of it. Disney had to put Hulu into Disney Plus to try to, you know, save their asses and and, sh- and team up with other people at ESPN to try to save their asses. But yes, no. yes, stay with them. They're going to turbocharge. Um, they're going turbo. They're going turbo. It's not in the right way. Um, it was funny. Before we did this video, there was an article in Forbes. And immediately I was thinking, oh, it's going to be more about Disney is right and it wasn't. The person did an article and they were talking about everything we've been talking about. Like when they put their white paper out and their creative accounting for how they made money with Marvel and Star Wars and putting Frozen on there and other things. And interestingly enough, in the Forbes article, they mention what I mentioned. They're talking about movies and things not doing well. And um, other people have tried to argue that it was Bob Chapek's fault. But they said uh, the different movies lost a bunch of money. They were greenlit in 2016 by Bob Iger, yeah. who preso- presided over skyrocketing price of his theme park tickets and hotels. Cord cutting was a worry, and in 2019 he launched Disney Plus. Yes, and then he said he handed the reins to Bob Chapek, and then then head of Disney's parks, who got the blame when Disney stock price went into free fall. But, but Bob Iger was the one who was placing massive bets on these movies that a lot of the ones that have failed were greenlit under him. This is coming from Forbes. All right. Yeah. So it's not just us that's saying it. Forbes is also saying it. Yeah. So it's it's pretty obvious now. But it doesn't matter. I mean, at this point, it doesn't matter. They they won. It's going to be another year of the same crap. It does matter though because if they don't fix it, it's going to it's going to be worse next time. What's the stock at now? Oh, let me see here. It's still going down. Still going down. We'll yeah. go back to the part the the laughing place thing. Um, okay, so let's see what else. Okay, then they gave. Oh yeah, I love this. We had twenty Oscar nominations. We were the industry leader. You won five, Bob, and most of them weren't Disney. They were like twentieth century, yeah, or, or whatever. That you won five. You received twenty seven Golden Globe nominations, and you won prizes for two things. Okay, five things, dude. That's not a glowing. That's not a glowing win. Then you got a sneak peek of Inside Out two, and then at least it's not Outside In. That's totally, I know. Well, we don't know yet. That's a totally um, different movie. Then they talk about Moana, and then there's the one picture. We're gonna give you a sneak peek. And it's literally this this picture. Uh, yeah. So that picture, um, from Moana two has has Moana in it, and uh, yeah, we know this movie about Moana has Moana in it. So there's that big huge spoiler. Right, and then they they doubled down about the live action adaptation still moving forward. Probably had to agree to that to get uh, what's his nuts to come back onto it. Um, oh, uh, Johnson. Johnson, yeah. Johnson, yeah. yeah. Um, then they're talking about sports and ESPN and oh, and then they're then oh, I love it. They're talking about the kids, and then we're going to go to where the kids are, guys, with our deal with Epic Games and Fortnite. And literally, oh, you better be careful with that. Disney. But literally the way he worded it was like, hey there, fellow kids. Oh, this whole thing is, hey there. Fortnite peaked like five years ago. But when he was talking about it, though, if you go back and replay it or hear it from somebody else when they they cover the, the actual thing, it is so, hey there, fellow kids. It's ridiculous. Yeah. 
Then they're talking about the Disneyland forward. It's still not approved. That's actually a big expansion at Disneyland. If it gets approved, it probably will get approved. Um, go up. Then they're talking about, uh, yeah, the Disney Pandora we talked about. They're yeah. talking about they're, they're working with Make-A-Wish and all that. Which they've been doing for decades. <laughs> yes, it's nothing new. Disney, it's well, Disney new. designed the logo. Um, yeah, I know, right? So <laughs> then we get to the key, the questions. These are where it gets great. Yeah. Um, they're talking about streaming strategy. And he's like, we integrated Hulu into Disney+. Plus." Uh, oh, boy. Hey, who, who could have seen that coming? I know, right? I know. Uh, you thought it would be that they would go with Hulu and said Disney Plus, but that you were going to merge. They were going to merge. I, it does make sense to have. Well, it's the same with Crunchyroll and Funimation. Like one of those, we're going to, you know, we figured something was going to happen there. But like, it does make sense to have two streaming services. Then I'm like, what the hell did you pay for? Mm -hmm. You know? Here's the second question. And they actually have the question. The parks are a special place and deserve to be maintained, restored, and treasured for the next generation and generations to come. How is Disney striving to restore the perks? Service level and details that truly make Disney theme park experience special. The Disney difference, basically. And he's like, oh, the quality at the parks is top level. Yeah, I totally get that from all the overflowing garbage cans. Yeah, right. Uh, the re they made recent changes to park hopping rules. The park hopping rules. Okay. Before the pandemic, you could park hop. If you paid for the ticket, you could park hop. If you're an annual pass or you could park, park, pass holder, you could park hop. We made, we made them a little better. They're still not what they used to be. But it's about control. So that's not a win. I mean, it is, but it isn't. And then they're like, oh, we're putting investment in parks. Okay. What investment besides like overseas? Smell offense. Yeah. Smell offense on parade. No. Okay. So I'm going to, th this pisses me off. So Walt Disney World should be the crown jewel of the Disney theme park empire, right? And what we see year after year is that Disney's best ideas go overseas. They spend money on cruise ships. You know why? Because a lot of those overseas parks, their part owner was so that, that, that they'll pay for the R&D and then they can bring those attractions like Ratatouille yeah. and Tron over here. In as about a, a decade. Yeah, as a clone. As a clone in about a decade. You know what I'm saying? Like it used to be that, that Disney World was head and shoulders above every other theme park out there and that it, the innovation was there. And now Disney World basically, because they know you're going to come, you're going to come to Disney World anyway. They don't need to put new attractions in. You're going you're gonna to go anyway. Some of these people come right on the street when they see the castle. Oh. I've seen the videos. I'm just saying. <laughs> they might as well. Um, another question. With Epic Universe opening up in Orlando in 2025, why hasn't Disney prepared anything or placed more than just a handful of attractions in the pipeline <laughs> to be ready for this in 2025 at Walt Disney World? And here's where Bob Iger is like, that thing can be further from the truth. We knew it was coming. So we did Avatar in 2017, Galaxy's Edge in, 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 in 2019, Runaway Railway, which was like 2020, um, Epcot Transformation, which was cut back, scaled back massively. Yes. I mean, <laughs> come on, dude. <laughs> Like, it was a big we, pile of nothing. You were like, you were just talking out your ass. Your breath is terrible. We knew someday that Universal was going to open a theme park in Orlando. So Walt Disney had the foresight to open Disney World in Orlando before, before they even got the idea mm -hmm. to come down here. Because we were just, they were psychic. Time they, travel. They knew. Yeah, I know. It was it was such a, a ridiculous I mean, answer, non-answer. It wasn't even an answer. It was a no, ridiculous non-answer. We spent the money on the money that we spent and we're spending, and we're constantly with the magic of the storytelling and the parks and the perks and the you know, value add. and the, the Yeah, next question. Basically. Basically, what the fuck are you doing, Bob? That's what they're asking you. You're the CEO. The movies suck. The theme parks are in decline. You're, 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 uh, hitting people upside the head with your political messaging. What the fuck are you doing? Well, well then he admitted that we reached an agreement with the central Florida over tourism oversight district. No, no you basically and, settled and, so you could do right, something so that we can undergo significant investments in Florida. You couldn't yes. do it because you can't do yes. it when you're fighting the people that you need to work with. Yes. You know, shocker. I, I told you guys this. It's like, that's why you're not hearing anything because it can't. Then they talked about the movies that are the ones that, you know, most of them that we've mentioned before. Um, this one. As societal values and norms change, how does the Walt Disney Company balance the tags <sighs> being involved with the evolve, wait, being of Evolving involving with, with the, the times, times to create timeless time. content that appeals to current generations and still preserving rich traditions of human connection and original storytelling? 
And then he says about, well, you know, oh, Walt, you know, we're, good, we're, we're talking about their core ideals of respect and compassion and all that crap. <laughs> yeah, I love how they drag Walt Disney out when it's convenient. I hope, I, know, right? I hope that this puts the fear of Walt into them because the, the, the reason they're in this position is because they forgot that Disney first and foremost is supposed to be a creative company creating entertainment products for everybody. Mm-hmm. And they're not then, doing that. Then this one, we were, we were losing our shit. Is it possible for Disney to stay out of political and social agendas and just provide entertainment? <laughs> and and then um, that's when he's like, I believe we have a responsibility to do good. And I think they were doing this as a, as a obviously this is not like an audio to text thing. It was yeah, it was um, um, somebody yeah typed in a question and then it was like it was like as a company do you no no, think? no I mean in this write up oh like, yeah no not. I think they're trying to furiously keep up with yeah there's seven. a lot it was fast but yeah basically he's like we you know we want to we want to be decent and I'm like so you're implying that anybody who doesn't agree with your films is, is not decent I yes. mean you're losing your customer base and they brought someone else mentioned that earlier about how you're losing your customer base and your consumer base and your answer is, well, we're gonna we, we're gonna stay out of politics, but you haven't, and we're gonna but we're gonna stick with decency and represent as many people as we can. And ba- and the implication is, if you don't agree, you're not a decent person. Yeah, I mean that's not what he said, but that's kind of what the implication is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that that's what. But this is this is right up there with the unfavorable mix. It's mm-hmm. Like you you already told your consumers what you think about them, that they're not. Because they're saying, could you stay out of politics? And we're guided by a sense of decency. It's like the decent people like our movies. It's you bigots and Nazis right. who don't like our movies and, and, again, and don't like Ray. You keep shoving all this stuff in and changing things. Look what happened to Willow and everything. You had to pull it down. You know, look, there's no, nothing saying, and they keep not misunderstanding this. You can have diversity and inclusion in something and have it be entertaining and, and be about a good story and characters first. And you guys cannot understand that. And I'm not talking about just Disney, Hollywood in general. It has been for years we had, when we grew up, there were all kinds of movies and shows that had representation, but they were characters who just happened to be this, that, or the other. The movie and the characters were about what people wanted to see. Like, I can't wait to go see this movie because it's going to be awesome. No, I can't wait to go see this movie because it's a, it's a black guy. You know, that wasn't, that wasn't what happened, but that's what you guys are doing. And you keep thinking if you race swap, that's, that's, you know, you're, you doing, you know, good. And that's you being diverse and inclusive. And that's not, it's cheap. It's lazy. It's, it's insulting. Yeah. If you gender race swap, all this crap, it's, it's not creating something new. It's just appropriating something and getting, you know, hand me down sloppy seconds. And it's not, it's not the win you think it is. And I'm tired of it. I know a lot of people are tired of it more than me. Um, but I'm just, it's just, it's not what you think. And then they tell your audience, if you don't like this stuff, then, you know, you're just not, you know, basically the implication is you're not a decent person. We're going to go with decency. And that would imply that if you don't like it, you're not decent. So was there anything new announced? No, Nothing. All, Taylor all Swift, stuff, Fortnite, Avatar, Moana 2. Bullshit. That's all it was. Oh, just that we got to look at the Moana of like a still. And here's another inside out teaser. But good news. Moana's in Moana uh, too. Oh, no, look at the Avatar experience. Cause people kept saying, well, what is it? it? And they wouldn't answer the question. So we still don't know what it is. Looks like some concept art. It just looks, it, I mean, I guarantee it's going to be a smaller area than what we have at, at Walt Disney World. Oh, um, is that the way that looks? Yeah, it just looks like, yeah. I mean, it, uh, <laughs> I don't even, I don't even have words anymore. Like I think basically they spent all this time just trying to buy time that they're they don't well, have they got a plan. A year now. And they they still got a year. have a plan. They had and a if year. They don't deliver. They're gonna get their asses kicked even more next year. Like you think it's bad this year? If last year was just pelts. This year was it was trying and it was Blackwell and next it was, year will be must. You know, value act technically. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And then next year, it's gonna if you don't deliver, it's gonna be far, far worse. Now. The good news for the Disney board and, and Iger is that in Florida, they can start making announcements soon because now they actually are working with the district. They thought they were being all clever and, and, and they were going to, you know, cut them off the knees and take their power away. And all it did was blow up in their faces, take drag out for a year and cost a bunch of money for them to lose anyway. Yeah. Which, you know, obviously they're going to lose because it was really shitty. Um and now they're moving forward to Anaheim finally. So I think we will begin announcements. I think D23, we will have actual things, not just blue sky art 
this time because I think they're going to have time to put stuff together by the, by then. Uh, they're going to have to. And they're going to have to have a timetable that's not, you know, five years from now. Yeah. I mean, I just I, I just kind of like I, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say more. I mean, it seemed like Disney had a hell of a lot more direction a decade ago. Mm -hmm. um, and even then you could see the decline starting because it seemed that about a decade ago was when they started dividing their attention between uh, you know, the air national parks more. Cause it used to be, we just had, you know, Tokyo Disney, which kind of does its own thing. And then we had, you know, Euro Disney. Uh, but then once they open, you know, Hong Kong and Shanghai, it's like, well, now we got to, you know, and then they started putting DVCs all over the place and that became the big focus. Now it's just like Disney world just gets the leftovers. Pretty much. You know? And I mean, mm. Disney world's like their, their big one. It's supposed to be. Yeah. That was, I mean, you want to talk about Walt. That was, that was Walt's crown jewel. Like Walt was all about the Florida project and they're letting that thing just rot, you know, and they're chasing all this other stuff. I just, you know, and especially overseas ones, because that was Iger's legacy. The Shanghai, the Hong yeah. Kong, all that stuff was him. Yes. And then Universal's opening parks, they're going to open, you know, one in, supposedly in the UK, and they're opening a, a Halloween Horror Nights experience in, in Vegas, which is really smart, because Halloween that Horror Nights is, incredibly smart. Is, a, is very popular for them. And to have something that's year round, it's going to do. Oh really my god! Well. I, I would. I mean, I I would go to Vegas just to go to Halloween Horror Nights. I would. And there's like Universal Parks in all different countries. I mean, they're going to get their asses kicked. And when you ask Bob about it, oh well, we knew it was we coming. We saw it coming. So we we did all these things, you know, seven years ago to offset it. We that that first one he mentioned was from seven years ago. Pandora opened seven years ago. Yeah, that was it, seven years since you were sniffing the walls and saying it smells like Lowe's. Yeah. Yeah, he I, literally was going I did. To be I, I did. It. I went in. I went in when they first opened Pandora because we were there within like a week of them opening it. It was within, yeah. It was quick. We um, were there in the beginning. Yeah, and we used to. Yeah, we used to get to the front of the line. We Good used times. to be in things like you were in Toy Story Land before Toy Story Land opened. I was in Toy um, Story you were Land. In Galaxy's Edge before Galaxy's Edge opened. Yeah, so I was in Galaxy's Edge when they were building it because we we were again we talked about it before, but I don't know if people realize we were actually part of Disney's media for or for a while. Um, yeah, I was in Galaxy's we were doing Edge this for a long time. A long time. Um, so yeah, I was in Galaxy's Edge before, uh, as they were building it, and I was in Toy Story Land. I got to ride everything like two days before it opened. And actually, when I was there, Tim Allen was there. I didn't mm -hmm. get to talk to Tim Allen, but uh, that's okay. But he was there that day, and uh, I don't, I don't remember if Tom Hanks was there or not. But I know Tim Allen was. For yeah, sure. Tim Allen was. But yeah, that opened in twenty eighteen. Yeah, Galaxy's Edge was twenty nineteen. Yeah. Uh, Mickey Minnie's Runway Railway was 2020. Epcot finally just started opening crap in the last couple of years because it took them forever and a day to get it done. But the Galaxy's that or the Guardians of the Galaxy ride that started building in 2017. They didn't even open it until a couple of years ago. But you yeah. know, yeah, they're, they they just totally knew. When he said that, I about fell on my chair. I was like, "Are you kidding me right now?" I, I don't even Are you know what. Serious? I, like, I can't. I can't. Not that I've gone out of my way to defend this company, right? But like, I don't. I've given up any hope that they're going to change. Because at this point, the last chance they had, I think, to course correct was to get somebody like Jay Rizzuto on the board, right? And eventually find a proper successor for Bob Iger that actually still cared about the Disney that we grew up with. And the Disney now is just Disney co it's Disco. It's, it's disco. It's Mickey mouse disco. Mm -hmm. Uh, they, they just don't care about the product is what it is. It's just, it's just, it is a product. It is product. product. It's corporate. It's product. Pigs. It's not about stories. That's lip service to get you to part with your money. It's not even about the politics. That's lip service to get oh, people to part with money for Iger. That's something else he kept going on about. All the IP, all the IP. And we're going to do Fortnite. We're going to put IP and uh, IP. And it's like, yeah. See. Walt never referred. I mean, you want to talk about Walt. He never referred. Every every movie that came out of that studio, he was personally invested in. He had a hand in it somehow. Now it's just IP. Now it's just IP. It's just part of the portfolio. You know, that, that's, that's what this company is. And so, it's... There Very it cool. is. Uh, it'll be interesting to see where how this goes. We have a whole year of uh, head to see how how this. I, I do honestly think you're going to get more announcements this year because I think they can. They're going to if they get Anaheim's approval, they can move forward in Disneyland. Yeah. If they, I think by D23 we'll get announcements for Walt Disney World because now they're going to work with the board. So I fully expect us to actually get announcements this year. Um, I don't know how well it's going to be for the company with streaming and if they keep you know upcharging people on Disney Plus so much. How, or how that's going to go, or GD Plus, I mean, how that's going to go. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah. 
Are we going to wrap it up? I think we're going to wrap it up, guys. There's nothing to see here. It's it's over. It's all, <laughs> it was all just rehashed everything it else. It was just rewarmed, it was reheated. Funny. It just, I think it. I think the the it's biggest. Already been, it's already passed through Mickey. It's come out the other end. It's, you know, yeah, I think the biggest takeaway is that shareholders in general do seem sick of the politics because that that was a, a, a running theme. Yeah, it was a running theme um, on both sides, but it was on a both sides. Theme. But it was like you know, mostly, mostly, mostly sounds like people on the right though, because the ones that were up. getting through, yeah, they were getting really fed up. Yep. So. All right. Anyway, let's wrap it up. Yep. We'll see you. Bye.